today i'm going to give you guys 10 tips on how you can have a perfect start in call of dragons so that way you can reach 1 million power in the fastest way possible as a free to play player what's going on guys cheers now if you guys follow these 10 tips you should be hitting 1 million power as a free to play player within just a couple of days but the first tip on this list is going to apply to the moment that you first start playing call of dragons and that is making sure that you start in the newest possible server now when you first play the game you start up you're gonna see a cutscene. it's a very cool cutscene, and then they're gonna throw you into a brand new server typically they throw you into one of the two newest servers that are open for the game and you don't have a choice however once you get into your city you get past the tutorial it takes maybe 10 or 15 minutes you can come into the settings here and you can go ahead and create a new character and here you can see how long the latest servers have been open if you are placed into a server that is longer than 24 hours old you could also get away with 48 hours i would say but typically you want to start in a server that is less than one day old because the first i think five or seven days of a server has a ton of events that only come around one time and they give you a bunch of free resources and speed ups as well as access to Krieg over here for free you unlock him just by doing those events so if they throw you into a server that's two or three days old I would say just learn the game a little bit and then if you want to take it really seriously create a new character in the latest server as soon as it becomes available once your character is in the latest possible server tip number two involves the auger stone this is one of the first buildings that you're going to see in your city and if you open this menu up you're going to see a bunch of different milestones and rewards as your kingdom progresses through what's called season one this is essentially kingdom milestones so the first one all the way to the left is called faith above all right here and this says 7500 lords must upgrade their cities to level four by the end of the countdown this is extremely easy because level four takes you can get this within the first couple of minutes of playing the game but you want to pay attention to these milestones because as you see here every single milestone gives you some number of gems usually gold keys or artifact keys some number of speed ups for example and as you go through here all this stuff is free and as you can see the mask of deceit I actually missed this reward and you can never go back to get this so 200 gems that's premium currency gems are going to be very rare so make sure you get as many of these for free as possible I was able to get most of these done I missed two but keep an eye on these different chapters these new quests are going to apply to the entire kingdom and you want to make sure that you're getting all of these done most of these are relatively easy and if you're in an active alliance then a lot of them you're just going to get for free with that being said tip number three has to do with an alliance and that is join the best one that you can and one of the reasons you might be watching this video is because some of the better alliances in the game have a power requirement so right now the alliance that i'm in has a minimum power requirement of two million so we don't accept anybody that's below that 2 million mark. And within the first couple of days of a server being open, typically you'll see like 500,000 power or maybe even 1 million power. And that's why you're watching this video. And also the reason that I'm making this video, because you want to get into the best alliance possible. Why is that? Well, if you can't get into the alliance that you want to get into, let's say because they require 1 million power, I would say get into the most active one that you can for a few reasons. For one, if there is territory that is owned by that alliance, you're going to gain resources over time for free free you can click this claim button and boom you get those resources just by being in that alliance not only that but there is alliance technology so over here you can see that there are four different branches of alliance technology and these are all focused and worked on by all members of the alliance so not just you but by being in an alliance you're going to get buffs to your resource gathering within alliance territory you'll also have access to the alliance resource centers so here you can see we have a level five alliance mana well mana is very rare in the game as well so having access to mana at all times is huge and you can see that the reserves here are crazy I'm actually gonna send something to this beyond that being in an alliance is going to speed up your upgrades without you having to do anything so essentially when you first join an alliance and you go to upgrade a building or you go to upgrade your research you can ask your alliance for help by just tapping on the button and then other alliance members who are online can tap the help button and it will reduce the amount of time that it takes to upgrade something so here you can see that this mana purification was reduced by 42 minutes scholarship was reduced by almost 21 hours 21 hours of time was reduced for free just by being in an alliance this is huge if you want to get to 1 million power fast you need to be in an active alliance and finally 
as you can see here if players make purchases in your alliance which literally just happened as i was recording this then you can claim these gifts for free and you don't have to pay anything so if you're free to play then you want to get into an alliance that has people who maybe are spending a little bit in the game which typically has a power requirement which is why you're watching this video but you can see here i got a bunch of different uh you know speed ups and let's see what we got from this one a silver chest that's amazing 50 gems for free i didn't have to do anything let's see if they go ahead and buy the gold chest here in just a moment but you also can get a uh, chest for free if even if nobody actually spends in the alliance and that is just by rallying the different uh darkling forts out in the world here so let's see if i can find one there's one right here level two darkling fort you can only defeat these in an alliance anyway but when you do everyone will get a fort war spoils chest as well which is huge and then also oh my god we got golden chests being dropped for free look at that seven hours of speed ups five thousand alliance points that's good for the alliance and there's the third one. Oh my god we got five sentinel arrows which are important for city progression so hopefully i've made this clear you want to be in the best possible alliance you can get into and if you need a power requirement for the alliance that you want to be into then follow the rest of the tips in this video so that way you can get there as fast as possible tip number four is always use your second builder queue so if you come over to your halfling house which is one of the first buildings you're going to see in the game you could tap this and you can see that there are two builder cues that you could possibly be using the first one you have all the time the second one can either be unlocked temporarily with the second builder queue items that you get at the beginning of the game which are free which is great I believe they give you either 24 or 48 hours of a free second builder queue once you run out of those free second builder queues you can unlock this second builder queue permanently in one of two ways if you're a free to play player it will cost you 5,000 gems so all the gems that you get at the beginning of the game should be saved they should be hoarded and they should be used on the permanent builder second queue because this effectively doubles your building speed you're going to be able to progress on two buildings at any given time and that is just going to add to your power because if you didn't know that's one of the number one ways that you gain power in this game is by upgrading your buildings you can see here on the right hand side this is my building city hall going from 23 to 24 brings the power from 907,000 to 1.3 million so it's low numbers at the beginning but it, it gets it gets up there really really quickly same thing as the case for research as well you can also unlock the second builder queue permanently for a five dollar bundle so if you are spending a little bit in the game that's probably the best five dollars you can spend in the game so consider doing that if you want to but you don't have to it's actually pretty easy to get 5,000 gems at the very beginning of the game because there's going to be a ton of quests that actually gets you there moving on to tip number five this is another relatively quick tip but if you see above my head all the way up here in the top bar you can see there's a couple of different icons here okay and if we actually click on that uh you can see what icons I have active I have a gathering speed gold production wood production or production and mana production these are all giving me plus 25 percent production of those specific resources and I have a 50 percent gathering speed bonus these are all things that you can get for free and easily by using their respective items so if you come over here this little upwards arrow means that this is where your buffs are located but by going through the quests in the game you're going to get these gathering enhancements gold enhancements mana enhancements you're going to get all these for free over time you can see here that I have a bunch of each of them you also can get access to them I believe in the goblin market never spend gems on them but if you can get them for some amount of resources then typically it's a good deal what that means is they're going to at certain building levels they're going to produce more resources than it costs in the goblin market so definitely buy them for resources never for gems but you always want to have these active okay I have the eight hour ones up right now but they're also obviously exist the 24 hour ones so typically at reset every day you want to go ahead and use your 24 hour gold boost use your 24 hour wood boost just go through and keep them up all the time you always want to have as many resources as possible because speeding to 1 million power is going to cost a lot of resources and especially for things like your wall speaking of your wall let's move on to tip number six and that is the best order that you can upgrade your buildings okay and this is going to be important if you've played other city builder games sometimes in games like clash of clans for example you want to upgrade a bunch of different buildings all at all at even levels in games like hall of dragons you actually want to focus on your hall of order now if you started with wilderberg or spring wardens this main hall is going to be called something different but if you pick the league of order it's called the hall of order regardless of what it's called the hall is the number one thing that you want to upgrade as you're progressing to 1 million power because the level of your hall is going to be the maximum level that you can bring any other building 
22. so you have to bring your hall of order up to 25 in order to get your other buildings up to 25 and if you guys didn't know that is the maximum level for your hall here in the game when you tap the upgrade button it's going to show you the requirements to getting to the next level and your wall is always going to be a requirement which means you always want to prioritize your wall and the way that you would do that uh, if you come over to your wall is you'll see that you have to upgrade your hospital you always have to upgrade your hospital to upgrade your wall therefore you always have to upgrade your hospital to upgrade your hall and in order to upgrade your hospital you guessed it you have to upgrade another building called the foundry the foundry is what produces ore in your city this is a pretty good building to upgrade anyway because ore is more scarce than your gold or your wood so regardless you're going to want your foundry to be leveled up anyway but as soon as you level up your hall and you want to focus on the next hall level you want to go foundry then hospital then wall then hall now of course if there's another requirement some levels have other requirements some do not eventually you're going to have to upgrade your different troop training buildings so early in the game you're going to have to upgrade your abbey then you're going to have to upgrade your i believe your night camp which requires your swordman camp and right now you can see that my next level to get to 24 is going to be the celestial temple but i'm at over 6 million power you don't have to worry about the celestial temple at the beginning of the game and of course this may be called something else for you if you didn't pick the hall of order but no matter what level your hall is whether it's level 4 or level 14 you always have to do foundry hospital wall hall so remember that that's the order next we're going to talk about the best research path that you can focus on to get to 1 million power as fast as possible but we're more than halfway through this video and if you found this video useful so far consider dropping a thumbs up on it it really helps out the video a ton it'll get this out into the youtube algorithm so other call of dragons players might be able to see it and also if you want a more in-depth beginner's guide it's over 40 minutes long on my channel go ahead and check that out the link will be in the description below that's going to give you even more information than this one so make sure you check that out so tip number seven has to do with the best order that you can upgrade your technology now the first thing that you have to know about your technology is that the beginning corner here okay I'll move over to this side of the screen this beginning corner this little pizza slice right here uh, you can get all this stuff for free by going through and visiting different villages that your scouts are finding out in the world some of them are going to give you a choice between military technology or economic technology you always want to pick the economic technology because you can get all this done for free and at the beginning of the game you're focusing on getting 1 million power and training troops and fighting and waging war is not going to get you to 1 million power it's all about upgrading buildings and progressing your research first you want to focus on getting architecture one to five this is the number one priority and you're going to get some of this for free like I said getting this to five as soon as possible is going to make every building upgrade thereafter 15 percent faster that's huge that will apply in perpetuity that will apply forever so make sure you do that the next step is scholarship one you want to rush this okay get this to five as fast as possible so that way all future researches are 10 percent faster that is huge next you can guess this architecture two 35% building speed will apply to every building upgrade in the future forever. That is massive. And then finally, scholarship two over here, very expensive. You're probably not going to even have to worry about this for your first 1 million power, but that is your next goal. And in between there, let's say you have nothing else to focus on. You want to focus on stamina and then breath control in that order okay stamina is good for when you go offline breath control is good for when you're online okay because this is cp cp is the currency that you need in order to attack the darklings out in the world you can see here this darkling patrol if i want to attack it i can create a legion and this will cost 50 cp to attack and there is up in the top left corner you can see a cap so my cap is 1400 that cap will increase if you focus on the stamina technology which i just was talking about it increases it by 200 so the cp regenerates over time for free so when you go to bed you don't want your cp at cap because then you're essentially wasting that cp regeneration so focus stamina first if you're going to be going offline soon or breath control if you're planning on being online for a long time this is just going to get you more cp faster since we're already talking about command points let's move on to tip number eight and that is what you should be doing online versus offline so if you're online you want to be spending down your command points as much as possible you want to bring this all the way down to zero that way when you're offline you don't have to worry about this regenerating up to the cap you can tap this little gem here and it will tell you sort of what your regeneration speed is okay so i get one command point every 32 seconds in a moment we'll talk about how you can attack these darklings for fewer command points and sometimes even for free so stay tuned for that but when you're online you want to be fighting when you're offline and your command points are all the way drained down to zero 
that's when you really want to be gathering okay you want to send out your gatherers uh if you're in an alliance and you've been following these tips you want to send your best gatherer to the alliance resource pit and then you can send your other heroes to gather out in the world so if you're going to be gathering from the alliance pit let's say your alliance pit is mana then you want to use your other marches to gather ore, wood and gold of course if there's a bottleneck if you really need ore for your next wall upgrade then you can send all of your armies out to gather ore while you're offline but really you want to be gathering when you have no command points left so typically that's going to be when you're not online anymore now there's a few different uh, creatures that you can attack with command points there's darkling patrol and there's dark creatures and then there's also darkling guards additionally there's the darkling forts that also require command points to attack but this requires also a rally with your other alliance members so typically in the beginning of the game you're going to want to level up your heroes which is going to be accomplished by defeating the darkling patrol so here you can see depending on the level you get a varying amount of hero experience dark creatures are literally the same exact thing except they give you arcane dust which is literally experience but only for your artifacts typically i would recommend focusing on leveling up your heroes first but sometimes there are events like passion for rations here which will give you specific items depending on what you do so here you can see that you can get loose grain from the goblin market or from darkling forts but if you want to get the bag of grain you'll have to gather resources out in the field so if this is up then you may prioritize darkling forts so that way you can get this grain here and of course you can exchange that for different items so just keep that in mind typically your experience is good but there are some exceptions to that of course the goblin merchant just appeared in my city and as you can see here these are some of the options of you know just buying straight up or boost 24 hours you get it's 120,000 gold but to me it's worth it it's also 40 percent cheaper than if you were to buy it in the regular shop so i usually buy those all the time now i'm gonna throw in a little bonus tip here okay before we move on to tip number nine let's talk about these mana stones because these mana stones as you can see here are super important first of all a mana stone is an item that is dropped from a specific mob out in the world so here you could see behemoth acolytes okay and you'll notice that these are the ones that drop the mana stones because they have this little logo here instead of a, a level or a number they have that little mana stone logo and you'll see here on under the possible rewards there's a mana stone of diligence mana stone of research mana stone of haste and etc you're gonna find those specific enemies in the world okay you're gonna find them around the specific behemoths so here you can see there's a level four hydra but you can also find them around level one bears okay so it doesn't matter uh what the specific behemoth is they're always gonna be there however the ones at the more powerful behemoths are going to drop better on average mana stones okay so you can see here these mana stones only give you two percent buffs three percent buffs and things like that the purple mana stones next to me here 15 percent buffs the blue mana stones seven percent buffs so you obviously want to get the best the best ones possible but the reason we're talking about them is because they are a free way to buff your resource production some of them will actually give you a buff to your research speed so literally your research will take seven it will happen seven percent faster just by collecting the mana stone before you do your research that's very key you want to collect the mana stone first and then initiate the research if you've already initiated the research this isn't going to do anything okay so please keep that in mind typically if you're planning on doing big researches or big buildings okay you want to get a mana stone first and then start those upgrades but again you can go through and you can see a bunch of these there's wood production there's building speed 10 percent building speed mana gathering speed that's huge so all this stuff again this is free it's very good you definitely want to get this and this is a huge bonus tip don't sleep on this okay this is going to literally just help you progress faster and get to that 1 million power mark okay next let's talk about grinding the darklings okay because again I mentioned when you're online that's what you're going to be doing and the number one way to be able to grind as many of these as possible because remember your command points are a limited resource they're finite and you have to wait for them to come back when you attack them okay let's create a, a legion you're gonna see that it costs 50 command points okay now when you go ahead and you attack I'm just gonna send out uh let's let's send out two two legions to defeat this guy we'll just do a, a front line and a back line okay there's a couple things to keep in mind for one you always want to have your artifacts off cooldown when you're attacking these darklings especially in the early game and especially if you want to grind as many of them as possible okay 
so my Eliana here has a book that gives her a shield that means she's going to be able to tank more damage and I also have I don't know exactly what this glove is called I forgot it starts with the K but this applies a buff to whatever armies are within that uh, little circular AOE right there you always want these off cooldown because the ones that are meant for PVE that is player versus environment they typically do not have a rage cost and I know that we're getting into a little bit more complex things here but if you go in here you could see this has a 600 rage cost 400 rage cost um this one has none so this one also has none some of them have rage cost uh typically the ones that are peacekeeping those are the ones that are for pve or for defeating darklings those ones typically don't have a rage cost so focus on that but always make sure that they are off cooldown okay so even if i bring even if i bring eliana back to the city that is still not going to be off cooldown so you want to take your time with this you want to wait in between different darklings unless you're going to get free kills which we'll talk about uh, in a little bit but what you'll notice now okay is that if i go ahead and attempt to attack another darkling patrol my eliana only costs 48 command points so you actually uh will save you will be able to fight them cheaper if you chain these so essentially the more that you defeat in a row without returning to your city the more it's going to reduce the cost of the next one and if you click this little question mark here it explains that this effect can stack up to four times and is reset when legions return to city so right now it's stacked up to one which reduces it by two so you can have a total reduction of eight okay so instead of costing 50 it'll cost only 42 which is huge because you can multiply that by the number of legions that you have right and that's the other reason why you always wait leave them in the open field for that artifact to come off cooldown because your artifacts are very powerful you don't want to go into a fight without your artifacts because without that shield I'm going to take more damage which means I'm not going to last as long in the open field and I'm going to have to return back to my city and I'm going to lose that little bonus that that command point reduction okay I'm going to lose that similarly if you have something like the advanced incantation book okay this is instant fire burst damage this is instant direct damage of 2000 to a single target that's if you deal 2000 damage for free remember there's no rage cost for these ones okay 2000 damage for free well then there's just less enemies hitting you which means you're going to be taking less damage okay the best defense is a good offense in this case finally uh you want to make sure that you're using peacekeeping heroes okay so guanwin is huge you're going to get her for free very easy to get also eliana is a hero you're going to get on i think day two or three her event comes around and you can only unlock her from that event but she is also one that you can get for free the reason when to use these is because they have the peacekeeping talents which you should focus all the way in on if you want to copy mine right here you can you can write that down but the peacekeeping talent tree is going to deal more damage to the darklings also they typically will well they always will have a skill that also deals bonus damage to darklings and again the more damage you're dealing the the fewer troops they have left the less damage you're also going to take which means you're going to last longer in the open field finally garwood is a, a secret weapon for defeating the darklings in the open field because you can pair him with eliana and that's actually a very tanky peacekeeping legion okay if you look at his active skill here he has a healing factor and he also has damage taken reduction so every time his active skill goes off you're going to heal your troops which means you're going to stay in the out in the open world for longer so you can defeat more darklings at that reduced cost and you're going to take less damage okay so you're going to keep as many troops as possible so typically Eliana with Garwood great combination obviously Garwood is a legendary hero so I only have the first skill to three you know you don't have to focus on leveling these up you'll get him over time don't worry even if it's only at level one it's still a nice healing factor for defeating Darklings so try to defeat as many of them as possible before going back to your city so you can defeat even more and the final tip that I'm going to give you guys is how you can actually defeat some of these Darklings for free now this is more of an advanced tip this is pretty difficult to pull off okay it's very hard you have to get a little bit lucky uh with the spawn location of your Darklings okay but I'm going to show you guys how you can get this done and it involves having a artifact that has an AOE or area of effect okay so here you can see the Springs of Silence will deal 1600 damage factor in a designated arc okay 
this is one of the aoe's you can also use the kingslayer here this is a designated arc of 1800 the best artifact for this is typically going to be the phoenix eye because this actually has a circular designated circular damage you can see right on the uh on the in the little preview window here you're going to see it just shoots down and as you run away boom okay you can hit both targets so if you got phoenix eye if you got lucky with the phoenix eye then congratulations that's an incredible artifact i'm very jealous i wish i had it but for the purposes of this example i'm going to use the king slayer okay so i'm going to send out my eliana right uh, and essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to hope that these two darklings get close enough together to where if I start attacking one of them, uh, then my AOE from the Kingslayer can start to inflict damage on the other. The first thing you have to do is find an infantry darkling patrol. Okay. So here you see heavy infantry. So what we're going to do is for the first attack, you will have to use command points for the second attack. You shouldn't, if you get this right. Okay. So first you start attacking the infantry. Okay. Then you walk towards another darkling. Uh, so I'm going to walk over here and that infantry, because they're melee, they have to follow me. So now I'm going to turn around and I'm going to keep attacking. Uh, and here we can see that this is, and this is going to, this is the tricky part. Okay. Um, as I'm attacking here, I want to continue attacking and then use my King's blade. And as I do that, boom, you're going to see that this second darkling starts attacking me. All right, so as th they're attacking me now okay now under the assumption that i survive defeating the first darkling the battle will continue between my eliana and the other darkling now i use these darklings as an example just to show you how it's done but typically you want to do this with um weaker darklings as you can see here i'm going to die okay so don't do this with high level darklings that you can't defeat but if you're farming level 10 level 12 darklings you can use this to your advantage to essentially defeat two or more darklings for the cost of only attacking one of them now again as you saw it's a little bit finicky you have to get lucky with the spawn distance and you have to sort of time it right you have to have the right artifacts that have aoe but if you can do that then you're going to be able to kill more darklings for the same price of a single hit against that first one the more darklings that you defeat out in the world the more the free resources that you're going to get the sentinel arrows the speed ups the gold the resources and that's going to help you progress to 1 million power even faster this is also really good for the eliana event that happens very early on in the game because you're going to get item drops for every single one of these darklings that you defeat and some of them will give you the abandoned puppets which is what you need to get eliana also there's a box of blessing event so every darkling you defeat drops a box of blessing which as you can imagine gives you resources and things like that so you really can abuse this but you do have to be very patient and you have to kind of get a little bit lucky all right if you follow all the tips in this video you should be able to get to 1 million power within the first couple of days of playing the game obviously the more you play the more you grind the faster you're going to get there but if you follow everything here it'll be as fast as you possibly can do it with that being said if you enjoyed the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other call of dragons players might see it comment down below if you have other tips on how you can get to 1 million power even faster i would love to hear from you guys subscribe to the channel if you're new here i'm going to be posting more call of dragons content in the future so make sure you click that bell to be notified the next time that i do so and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace